And that brings us to our lab on setting up a development environment. I'm going to recommend that if you would like to pause the video here and work on the lab on your own, in just a few moments, I'm going to start doing a guided version of the lab where I'll step you through every step of the lab in a demonstration so that you can see everything that's going to happen. For those of you who are gonna stick around and see that, enjoy. For those of you who are gonna work it out on your own, good luck, and we'll see you in the next session. All right, folks who have stuck around, what you're gonna see next is a walkthrough of our lab setting up a development environment. Our objective for this lab is to revision a MinIO server in a single drive, single server deployment using Docker. What this means, of course, is that you are going to need to have a functional Docker environment installed on your local system. You're also gonna to need to have a working knowledge of Python, including a Python 3 install and PIP3. For this lab, we're also going to be using about five gigs of drive space. So make sure you have some free space on whatever drive you decide to set this up on. And then you're also gonna to need to have a text editor for when we're editing Python files in future labs. But that's basically everything you need for your lab environment. So the first thing that we're going to do is create a directory for our data. This is going to allow us to start and stop our MinIO environment without any data loss. For this, we're recommending about five gigs of drive space, although we're probably gonna use much less than that, but this gives you a little overhead in case you wanna store some extra files or play around with this on your own. So in a terminal, what you're gonna run is the mkdir, makedir. This command is similar on Windows, Mac, Linux, but the path to the directory is what's gonna be different. I'm sending mine to temp data. This is what we do in the lab. This is valid for Mac and for Linux. On Windows, it's gonna be C colon backslash instead of the slash, but at the end of the day, it's still the same makedir command. And what this does is create a data directory that we're going to then use in our Docker container. So the next step is where we're actually going to see this Docker container started up. So here's the command to run. It's docker run. That's very common for, for anybody who's worked with Docker before. I'm putting a backslash here so that I can go kind of piece by piece through the command. What we need to have now is a couple of ports open. So first off, we have a dash P. We need port 9000 open, okay? Port 9000 is the API port. This is where all of our RESTful API commands are going to be processed. Our other port is for the console and that's port 9090. Both of those ports are required. You need to have both of those ports exposed. Otherwise, you're not gonna be able to talk to your console. You're not gonna be able to talk to your MinIO deployment. We're gonna give this deployment a name. This is really for ease of use if I need to start and stop the container later on. Certainly if you're going section by section, it may be handy for you to shut down your Docker and go back and do your work and then come back and do another section. The name of this container is now going to be MinIO. It makes it easier to start and stop. We also need to mount that data directory. So whatever you called your data directory in the previous command, mine was slash temp slash data, but if you called it something else, use something else. And then you're gonna mount that directory into your container. I'm mounting it in the container as slash data. What this means is that inside the container when I'm running my MinIO server, I need to connect the MinIO server to slash data, which will then write the data out to my local file system. So there is my temp data mounted to slash data. The next part of the command is, well, it's actually a pair of flags dash E. These are the environment variables, minio root user. And we're gonna set that to admin. Okay. And then our other environment variable that we need is minio root password. And we're gonna set that to non prod password. Now, as hinted here, this is not a password you should use in production because it's on video. It's going to be the first thing that anybody is going to try to use to connect to your system. So don't use this in production. I wouldn't use this even if I was doing it in the cloud or something like that. I would use something much more secure than that. Now we need to actually get the MinIO image, which is on Quay.io. MinIO, MinIO. 
This is going to download the latest version for me. And then I need to run the command server. I give it the directory data and I give it a console address. And that's it. That's the entire command. I go ahead and run that. It's going to start pulling down my image so that I can run my container. I'm going to let that run for just a minute. Again, things to note. I have my two exposed ports, 9000 and 9090. I'm using that temp data directory mounted as slash data to store all my information in MinIO. And I have a root user named admin with a password, non-prod password, which again, don't use it in a production environment. So this then is our console login. And so we need to log in as admin and non-prod password. Once we've logged in, there we get our prompt to create a bucket because we don't have one yet. Okay. So to create a bucket, we click on the create bucket. You can also just click this link if you don't have any, but we're going to go ahead and click on the create bucket button. We're going to create a bucket named dev. We do not need any additional features for this. So that's it. We're done. Create bucket. Okay. The next piece we need to do is we need to create some credentials to connect with. So we go to our users, create user. We're going to create a user named dev user, and we're going to give it the password dev password. Now, again, don't use this in production. And if you decide that you want to do a different username and password, that's fine. You'll just need to keep track of that when you start writing the code for the other labs. Last but not least, we're going to give this user read write access because the code that we're going to be writing is going to need that read write access. We're going to be uploading, we're going to be downloading, we're going to have all kinds of fun. All right, and then we go ahead and click save. So we have our dev user and we have our dev bucket and that is everything you need. So our outcome here is at this stage, we have a functional MinIO deployment suitable for very simple development and testing. We have our dev bucket, we have our dev user and our container is up and running. And that's it for this lab. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you in the next one.